If you live in the US and have a cable subscription or know people that have cable subscriptions, you've probably heard about Shark Week. Now, I didn't really think that Shark Week was a thing until I saw the pilot of Community, which suggested that it is an annual thing, but apparently it's a thing. Can I say thing more times? Right, so Shark Week is around now at some point. I don't have a cable subscription. I entertain myself with the internet. Now, we here at Talking Threads are not opposed at all to animal appreciation, but Sharks aren't the only ones that should be appreciated. So, without further ado, it's Animal Appreciation Week. I'm Jackie, and this is Talking, Talking, Talking Threads. So when I was young, young being very relative in this sense, I used to have an iguana. And ever since then, there's just something about iguanas and lizards and other reptilian creatures that I just find really, really cool when I find them in real life. But I wanted to dig behind those vague childhood memories and see if there was actually something interesting and admirable and awesome about an iguana. And it turns out there is. Iguanas, as well as a few other animals, have something that's called a parietal eye. The parietal eye is sort of like right around here or so, and it's literally a third eye on iguanas. However, unlike the regular eyes, the parietal eye is specifically and very, very intensely sensitive to differences in brightness. And this is a defense measure against airborne predators. It allows them to see birds and now planes and occasionally Superman from a very, very far distance in the sky, sometimes even farther apparently than we can see as humans. This can cause problems if you own an iguana and you try and reach down and grab it because the parietal eye will sense your hand and the iguana will think that it's being attacked. And apparently if you have a pet iguana like in a car with you and you're driving on a freeway, it will duck and react to you driving under overpasses because of the parietal eye and its like instinctive reaction to changes in brightness and sensing predators. So I'm sorry, but you know, sharks, you, you really can't match or top that. Wait. Wait, seriously? <sighs> oh. I'm sad and disappointed to inform you that the pelagic shark has a parietal eye. That was only my penultimate point of iguana appreciation supremacy. Iguanas are also herbivores, which makes them better pets. So while the Shangri-La for an iguana is a fruit salad, the Shangri-La for a shark is other fish. So there, sharks, iguanas deserve your respect. <laughs> All right, so I really enjoyed our vocabulary game. Let's keep it going down below. But. If it's not actually in the dictionary, please provide a pronunciation guide. Or even if it is in the dictionary, I mean, you can help me be lazy. That's totally cool. Apologies if I garbled any of the terms or classifications or pronounced them weird. I'm not actually a biologist by any stretch, but the web has an awesome pronunciation guide. Also, everything is pronounced with a British accent, which is fine, but I feel like American biologists might laugh at me. Be my friends, biologists. That is all. Sid, I'll see you on Tuesday.